This is Twit. Uh, Apple did, uh, I guess, did not surprise anybody. They did not have an event in October. I was sure they were going to have an event in October. I guess it's not too late. They could do something next week, but they haven't invited anybody. Their quarterly results are Thursday. They are releasing. They did announce this week that they're going to release Mac OS Ventura and iPad OS 16 tomorrow. Uh, they also announced new iPads, and I loved uh, Jason Snell's uh, take. He's not alone. Uh, almost everybody has said, uh, what the hell? J Jason says the iPad's erratic odyssey continues. We'll ask him on Tuesday on uh, Mac Break Weekly about this. But the problem is they now have kind of a weird mishmash of iPads. Uh, in fact, their iPad Pro, which one would think is the top of the line, actually doesn't have some of the features of the 10th generation iPad. <laughs> and the 10th generation iPad doesn't work with the newest pencil and the cameras on the top on the 10th generation, but on the side on the iPad Pro. It very much, in fact, if you go to the um, Apple store and you look, it's very confusing. What is the Apple, what is the iPad Air? How does that fit in to this lineup? It's just a very confusing uh, carousel of models that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, Harry, I know y you like your iPad. In fact, you've been in here using an iPad instead of a laptop. Are you confused by this lineup, or does it all make sense to you? And are you going to get the new iPad Pro, perhaps more importantly? Uh, I'm a little confused. I mean, after having spent more time thinking about it than most people will or should be expected to do, I'm less confused, but it, it is still a really cluttered lineup. I, I'd say... Um, one of the big issues is they now have three iPads, which have a screen that's about 11 inches. <laughs> um, the, the new 10th generation one, which is, it's the successor to the ninth generation one, but because it costs $120 more, the ninth generation one is still on the market. Then you have the iPad Air, which is very similar to the um, 10th generation, except it has a screen that's a little bit better and it has a much better processor. It has the M1. And then there's the 11 inch iPad Pro, which has an even better processor and a few other upgrades. It's one um, better, but the, it's the M2. But the, <laughs> but the look and feel is all basically the same for these these three yeah. iPads. And yeah. I, I think it's at least one iPad at that size. It's uh, more than the world needs. And, and you're right, the 10th um, the, uh, generation iPad has this thing that iPad Pro users have been asking for forever, which is the, the webcam being on, on the landscape. Yeah, because you use edge. it like a laptop. Yeah, As so I think most use, pro users do. So the camera, if it's on the side, it's like to your left. You look all shifty-eyed. It's um, weird. Yeah, it, sh it should be and, on the top. Like, is it on, on, on most laptops? Yeah, so Apple finally added that to this relatively inexpensive iPad, but it also released new iPad Pros that don't have that, maybe because it wasn't quite willing this year to invest in like a completely new design for the, for the iPad Pro. And then, uh, well, the, the new iPad has this landscape camera that people have been begging for. Um, they got rid of lightning, um, but they did not allow it to support the second generation Apple Pencil. So you need a dongle to charge your first generation <laughs> iPad Pencil, which still has lightning, which means that That's if, you're out, the weirdest if, you're out, thing. <laughs> if you're out and about and uh, your pencil dies and you didn't remember to bring a, a cable and an adapter, you're kind of out of luck. I got the, I have the Apple Pencil too, but I long ago, I don't know where I've thrown that adapter uh, because I never thought I'd need it. And now so I need it, right? Yeah, so this, they have this new iPad that's kind of stuck between the old iPad world and the new iPad world in a way that's a little uncomfortable. And you, you've you got to hope that maybe they have stuff planned out for next year where some of this will start to make sense and that they probably will involve pruning the lineup a little bit. Um I could see I why they, they didn't have an event because that's exactly what everybody would have been doing, cluster, scratching their yeah. heads at this event. Um, and uh, an answer to your question, I, I don't plan to buy this new iPad Pro neither. mainly because no. mainly because it's just not very different. It, yeah. it has a it has an even faster processor than the one I have, but um, lack of of computing muscle has not been an issue. In fact, I, I wish that Apple did more to create software. They really took advantage of these yes. really fast processors. Yes. And and the one cool thing it has is the, the second generation pencil on, on the new iPad Pros has this hover feature where, where if you hold the pe 
the pen just above the screen. It can do things like like in Apple's Notes app, you'll, you'll see a preview of, of the color and point tip, which is quite quite handy, but not worth spending a huge amount on, particularly if you kind of feel like maybe next year will be when Apple will do like a, a more significant Apple Pro upgrade. This has been the number one co I, complaints, not quite right, but the number one issue with the ipad pro is you've got all this horsepower and you don't have apps to take advantage of it uh jason snell says there's no getting around it the absence of apple's pro media apps on the ipad pro is an embarrassment all those other apps are great yes but apple has had the opportunity to take the lead in defining what the pro app experience should be on one of its platforms the ipad and has never seized it sounds like you agree lou yeah, I mean, I, I, I posted this even on social networking. I'm, I'm really disappointed in the fact that, you know, they are not putting forth even in their own apps to some of this horsepower. Now, if you get the iPad 11, one terabyte, you get even more RAM, but that thing's like 14, 1500 bucks, but you have no software to really take advantage of all that RAM. So like, why would people buy it? I don't understand. Yeah. I think uh, Apple was betting big on uh, the stage manager feature, this new multitasking interface, but um, which officially debuts on Monday, and we'll, we'll get to see what the masses think about it. But the people who have been using the betas, uh, I'd say pretty uniformly, at least on Twitter, find it to be like too convoluted and confusing, and um, uh, and it's not even something that will be turned on by default. So I, I think Apple maybe expected that Stage Manager would wow people, and so far it does not seem to be wowing much of anybody. It seems to be the reason the iPad OS is delayed. iPhone 16 came out last huh. month is because they couldn't quite get Stage Manager to work. It's going to come out tomorrow on both iPad OS and Mac OS. I used the beta on my iPad Pro and immediately turned it off. It just takes up uh, what is already limited screen space and doesn't behave in any way predictably. It does Stage we Manager is pretty yeah, no, sorry. No, go ahead. Um Stage Manager is pretty cool on an external monitor, but that 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 capability has been delayed even further until later this yes. year. Yes. So so I'm not getting the, the screen. The the more, yeah. The bigger the screen, the more Stage Manager might kind of make sense. And it, it is nice on an external monitor. It, it, honestly, it's not unusual for Apple to it happens all the time. Come up with uh, a new affordance that no one uses. That just kind of you know, doesn't go anywhere. And this may, despite all the attention they paid to it, they're trying to do something. And Lou, you you know, you work at Microsoft. They're trying to do something that Microsoft has had problems with in the past as well, which is to take a desktop interface and move it to a tablet. And famously with, with Windows 8, this was kind of a nightmare hybrid <laughs> desktop tablet. Microsoft backed off by, uh, by 8.1 and then eventually by uh, Windows 10 and actually now it's pretty it's very usable but it was difficult at first it was a struggle at first yeah I mean that, even for building applications you know you have to have this kind of hybrid experience um, and you know it's tough to get through that whole especially developer platform side of things people don't want to build for them because they're not they're kind of newer platforms and so that's what this will have a problem with is you're gonna have to have you're gonna have to get that critical mass on the platform before you see any value for it yeah um, yeah, and, and I think maybe stage manager is not the way to handle a multiple. I, I understand they want to bring desktop-like multi-window experience to iPad, but I don't think stage, for me, stage manager is a big miss. I would just, I you know, I turn it off immediately and don't ever use it. Uh, it's just, un also, it's unpredictable. You don't, you don't quite know what's going to happen. <laughs> and that's the kiss of death in a computing system. If nothing else, you need to be consist have consistent yeah, results, right? <laughs> Otherwise, people are just going to go, I, I'm, I'm confused. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.